Hey there, it's nice to see you again, and welcome back for Game 2, Canologic Gaming Academy versus Cloud9. Last time these teams duked it out, the CLG Academy jungler Wiggly put the beat down on his former squad. Yeah, so with a lot of emphasis. Uh, that's when we can finally say that this is the CLG roster that's been playing together for ages and finally looked good. And it ignited a hot streak for the team. It's important to note how different Cloud9 was back then as well. Wiggly faced off against his replacement as he used to be on C9 Academy. Uh, and Blabber absolutely destroyed him. And you can see in that gold graph, he was a huge factor in that win. And now Blabber's on the LCS roster. Yeah, so Wiggly's still looking good. While we're at it, let's look at who's duking it out today. Starting on the blue side, it's CLG Academy. In the top lane, Fallen Bandit. In the jungle, Wiggly's back to take him down in the mid Tuesday. But Otto, his support Phil, of course, and their coach, ex -Sogen. And opposite them on the red side, it's Cloud9 Academy. Shiro in the top lane, Sven Skarin in the jungle, Golden Glue in mid, Keith in the bot lane, Fang supporting him after the trade, and coach West Rice. And most notably, like you mentioned, Fang now joins the roster, adding another LCS caliber player. Yeah, and normally that'd be a clear cut improvement for an Academy roster, but it was at the cost of their veteran shot caller, Smoothie, who has now been traded away to Echo Fox. So. Well, it's usually nice to get an LCS trained player down there with you, but now it's uh, someone else in the bot lane. But you know, Cloud9 have made a lot of adjustments over the course of this season. And while their LCS team maybe not looking so hot, Academy's just fine. Top of the table still looking kind of to pick They're up with right it next off. to each other. Literally, they would be in the old system relegating themselves, uh, but not the case here. And it's really interesting to see because C9 has had every member play on both rosters aside for Licorice and Shiro, mm -hmm. who are the only two have, who have stuck to their respective positions. Well, we'll see what happens here in the draft at least. CLG Academy start with Morgana, pretty popular band today, and Nocturne. He's going to get the respect perhaps it deserves. We'll see what they do with the Aatrox. Uh, even last week at the very tail end of 813, some players and teams started leaving Aatrox to the third band to see if they can bait a blue side band of it. Maybe that's a more effective strategy now that the nerfs have come in. They are going to try and do that to see if CLG will ban it, or potentially they might just leave it up themselves. Yep, Swain and Rakan, the next two bans there. So C9 taking that one away. I've seen a lot of Rakan in different spots. Zaya also popping back up usually with him. As Talia, though, banned away a strong everything, yeah. depending on where you want to put her. you uh, been playing the bot lane, the jungle, mid lane, mid lane. You go anywhere. Just don't want to take Smite on her anymore unless she's actually the jungler. That's the big one. As the uh, minion, or excuse me, Monster Hunter debuff has come through and made it so that until you have completed your jungle item completely, if you have the jungle item in Smite, you will get reduced minion gold while farming lanes. So not as very effective for funnel strats or mid Smite strats. Certainly not, as Mundo actually is the last band. So Aatrox, Aatrox is in here, baby. Available. Fallen Bandit is thinking about it, and it's actually Kindred first pick. So they won the game of chicken. This is what you do it for. You say, you probably haven't practiced it in a while, huh? It's not been uh, available, but everyone's been banning it, so you probably are not familiar with it, so we'll leave it up. CLG thought they'd ban it. They don't. CLG's not prepared to play it clearly, so they lock in the Kindred instead. Now we'll see if it was a game of chicken by both sides, and C9 doesn't play it either. Well, there's Orianna to start things off, so it doesn't look like Aatrox just yet. And a very early comfort pick here for Golden Glue. He played it last week, certainly, maybe even yesterday, but has been playing a champion quite a bit. We'll see if he wants to pair with Sven Skarin's aggressive Evelyn, or a classic like Lee Sin, or, you know, a real meta champion like Gragas. Or that. I'm pretty disappointed, I gotta say. Me too. Oh, look at Wiggly! <laughs> Wiggly is so cheeky. Yeah, he's a... Uh... His character. And I'm really disappointed. No Aatrox picked her up right away. It was banned in the previous game. Still banned, I think, a fair amount yesterday and in Europe. So, mm -hmm. what's going on here? No one's playing Aatrox. It's like see, season one Ramus. See if someone gets punished. Who, who else besides me remembers that? I mean, as Victor locked in there for CLG. Oh, so Victor got some buffs on this patch as well. Has the W range increase on the mm -hmm. cast range. So, even though the circle is the same size, you can now put it further away from you, uh, which is really great for him and cutting escape paths off and things like that, uh, which is something that Victor sometimes struggles with as he has no hard CC aside for that ability. Yeah, it feels like Mage is in general shifting kind of back to the mid lane, so Victor kind of fits right in, was fine in 8.13 as well, but maybe seeing a bit more play. Pike still remaining popular is going to be the pickup here in the first phase for CLG. And Golden Glute hanging out, lots of junglers being flashed, despite, I assume, two jungle champions already been selected, but can be a swap up here if Sven does want to default to something like Sejuani, or perhaps a different Frosty champion in Braum. Yeah, like we were saying last game, we thought the Gravix was going to go in the jungle, ends up going in the top side. Very real threat, uh, still available here. 
and we'll see what they start banning out now because supports, mids, and junglers hypothetically matched across the board. And sometimes in the second draft phase, that does lead to a bit of an awkward situation where you want to ban out their tops without banning out your tops. And if you have a similar champion pool, it becomes difficult to say what you should actually be targeting. Well, not long left on this first phase two ban for Cloud9. So take it all the way down and actually take out Varus. Not a bad one. Nope. Certainly a pretty popular bot lane marksman. I'll have to see just how far down they're willing to go the totem pole of marksmen after that one because, you know, hypothetically, CLG can ban Ash, which seems to be rising uh, in priority for some people. have been seeing some playing Korea for actually a little while now, and especially, uh, I think it was last night or two nights oh, ago. I found the Aatrox ban. <laughs> All the way to phase two, CLG That's, finally decided that to, to ban That, to me, it. is a bit of a throwaway ban. Because yeah. uh, it's like, like I was saying, you're not sure what you want to ban out, and you know you don't play it. And just in the off chance they play it, you, you're going to ban it now. Because clearly, if they thought it was priority, they would have picked it already. And so it's it's a ban where you're like, we're not going to pick it, and just in the chance that they do, we'll ban it. Otherwise, it's it's a pretty, from what I've seen in the draft so far, not that the champion is worthless, but in this situation, a bit of a worthless ban. Yeah. And there's the rumble being banned away from C9. Saw that from No in the last game in the top side there for FlyQuest. So. Seems to be, like you said, despite some somewhat awkward AP item changes making him a sadder Rumble than before, so a pretty happy Yordle has gangplanked the next ban there for CLG. Yeah, he's been a champion that slowly, from what I've heard in rumblings of scrim, has been rising in priority for a lot of teams, uh, has good matchups into a lot of tanks, and as C9 grabs the poppy for themselves, that's clearly something you do not want to be playing into Rumble. Um, it's the know, world's fastest poppy lock in, by the way. Yeah, I mean... Shiro had a game against C uh, TLA Academy last week on it. It looked fantastic, so I'm glad to see it again here. Uh, works well against the Kindred and her little hops around. Can work against Pike, uh, but that's about it so far with her steadfast presence. Whereas in the game that he played it last time, it was into a Riven and Yasuo who would just get completely shut down by that steadfast presence. Kind of pick this time though for Fallen Manda, I assume, and there is actually Cannon potentially for the top lane. Could also be bot lane as well. Another champion that I've actually been hearing a fair amount of good things about, a fair amount of AP top laners actually, I've been hearing about uh, uh, finding success in scrims, Rumble being one of them, AP Kennen being another one that people like a lot. Uh, you know, when you're going for the counter pick Kennen, a lot of people like to press the attack, you know, attack speed Kennen that can really shut down and split push, but you can still grab double Dorans early on and with the adaptive keystones now, uh, switch over that AP build a li little later. Okay, then. Something's happening, because that's an Alistar pick for CLG Academy. We'll wait until the see the rest of the picks to see where they want to be Cannon moving bot lane, around. Pike top. Ooh. All right, I'm excited for Pike top. Saw some tank items on Sport Pike last game. Probably going to see some tank items on Pike top this game. I don't know what's happening. There's the Yasuo, so here you go. Yeah, all right, so Yasuo in the bot lane with Braum makes some sense, or in the mid lane, Poppy's still going top. Um, there's a chance that they flex the Yasuo to top and you run Poppy Braum in the bot lane, but that doesn't sound very good to me. Uh, the much more surprising thing is if this is actually a Pike and Alistar lane, I guess you can make that work. I don't really like Pike in the top side, so, you know, neither of those sound great to me. So, without having seen it, you know, I'll give it the benefit of the okay. doubt. We'll see how this works, but otherwise it seems like a bit of a sketchy proposition here for CLG Academy's bot side. I mean, it's kind of cool that teams have put their AD somewhere else. Ooh, last minute swap there. T9 Academy ah, are actually going oh. to run Ariana for Keith. Not the mage I expected to see today with Swain left unbanned, by the way. <laughs> no, definitely uh, not. Well, Swain was banned actually. Ah, Ariana no. was one of Golden Glue's best champions though. That's yes. what he kind of made his debut on the LCS stage with, had some great games on it and here, swaps it around, takes the Yasuo for himself. Uh, which is kind of nice to see because Yasuo or Golden Glue has been the primary carry for C9 Academy, but the Keith on Oriana is where the question marks start to arise if he's ready to play this mage. But it looks like a pretty free lane to play it against. We'll have to see just how aggressively CLG plays this bot lane. They will have a pretty gnarly level two all in if the Oriana is not careful. It's also a pretty Golden Glue centric comp as well. This is five knockups on the C9 Academy side. Poppy's quality of life buff and her ulti actually means you can combo Yasuo in there as well. You know that I pay attention to indirect Yasuo buffs more than anything else. I didn't was it. I didn't know if that was Yasuo knowledge or Poppy knowledge because to me that's Poppy knowledge. I saw the buff and I was like, great. As a Yasuo player, I now I'm happy that I can ulti off this ulti. <laughs> only when the quick, only when he quick cast it though. We'll see if it comes up. Right. Uh, the 
Well, the change we're talking about, if people are not aware, mm -hmm. is that previously when Poppy used her ult, people became untargetable as they were knocked up into the air, and as such, Minions they didn't take damage from AoE effects. They weren't uh, taking damage. You couldn't combo off it with Yasuo, for example, but now they stay on the map, technically, so you can continue to hit them with skill shots and things like that. It's only a knock-up now. Uh, which is great, actually, for pretty much every team fight situation. Yeah, it's kind of one of the reasons of, after kind of a series of smaller Poppy buffs have compiled up why she's back in the meta. And as you mentioned, there's a lot of good situations where Poppy is good. You mentioned uh, Riven, obviously not in this game, but Kindred will also feel similarly bad getting destroyed by Poppy. I mean, Alistar too lives and dies by his headbutt pole combos a lot of the time. And if your Poppy is there with a quick finger, you suddenly stop that really threatening Alistar engage. And uh, we'll have to see if they're able to use that to their advantage. Has a tough lane on the top side against this cannon. Uh, normally, this I'd say this is what I want to watch, but compared to what I'm expecting for shenanigans down the bot lane. Yeah. I mean, early on, no range just feels like a tough, tough lane for CLG. Yeah, especially against the airy Orianna. Oh, that's going to knock up there. Auto getting some damage down, but Fang happy to answer back. Already a stun there onto Auto. Ball also moved as well. Keith, looking good so far at level one. Really surprised I didn't go for a summoner trade there. I feel like if you continue to walk forward, you land the Ignite. Alistair's headbutt's already down. It's a super long cooldown level one. There would have been not much to come through at that point. Maybe you get the flash, maybe you get the, the kill trade. Instead, they play it a little slower, just getting their level twos and continuing to pressure down the bot side as they have a pretty big CS lead already. 11 to one is quite good. Still not level two either. Quickly though does get that first bounty on the left side crab. Wins the RNG battle. It's Kindred's greatest battle, herself versus the game. <laughs> As Golden Glue dancing around, buying time for Sven to come in. Windwall just to block a little bit. Ignite already down Tuesday and gonna try not to get knocked up by the Tornado, but Golden Glue chasing in. Flash Body Slam there for Sven, and there's the Nado for Golden Glue as he grabs first blood. Really questionable flash there by Tuesday as he kind of puts himself in a position where he had no hope of getting out. I mean, Sven Skarin did go for the Flash Body Slam to 100% guarantee it, but uh, was not flashing any closer to his base or teammates. As a result, Tuesday does drop. Golden Glue finds first blood with the help of Sven Skarin. Wiggly, though, has found his potential weak lane to prey on. Going to line up a dive here onto Shiro, who's got the flash and did see it already. Steadfast Presence up. Fallen Bandit already doing a little too much damage. The tower, though, it's actually going to be good. Shiro finds the trade under the turret. Oh. Wiggly, oh my goodness, he died as well from that last turret shot. And even though he didn't deal any damage to uh, Wiggly, I'm pretty sure the Steadfast Presence getting the knockup stun or interruption on the jump counts as interacting with the champion to get the kill. So this is very well played by Shiro, has this early on, gets close enough to Wiggly to interrupt that uh, Q, gets that stun up, and you see, as a result, I think his Corrupting Pot was ticking on Wiggly, so he actually did get some damage down as well. The second turret shot dropping, no flash available, and that's a bit of a disaster. Poppy able to go back and get some early MR and HP in this matchup. Yep, two in that first column there is Golden Blue again, and knock up onto Tuesday. Here's Wiggly mid lane. But Svenskaren has come back for a very quick revisit, trying to kill the victor once more. And despite, you know, the fact we're talking about the Poppy getting the double kill, I believe Wiggly got his uh, mark off in time and was able to uh, get his second bounty as a result. So he's actually not doing too bad, all things considered, for a 2v1 dive in the top side. Looking in mid lane this time, Golden Blue takes some poke from the victor laser, but he's going to be safe. Nice of Wiggly, though, to kind of help Tuesday out, given the early attention. That was paid to the lane. And uh, we finally check back in on the pot lane. I thought this is where we'd be watching a lot, but too much action elsewhere on the map. Uh, Otto has kind of let that gold lead stay at around uh, 10, has not, or excuse me, CS lead at 10 hasn't changed too much. And they do have the double Targon stack, so he is down only 100 gold despite the CS deficit. Not too bad here. Looks like C9 just kind of shoving here in the bot side as often as they can, looking to pressure. But as you mentioned, with the CS League getting closer, it doesn't feel so bad. Nice ward there from C9. Does see Wiggly on the Raptors, but not anything they can really do to interrupt it. Definitely curious to see what auto builds more than anything else, I think. I mean, he's, an, he's a bot lane slash AD player. I would expect some AD, but tank items also relatively effective on Pike as well. Right, for the, for the most part, people consider the tankier pipe builds to be the more effective ones. But then again, like you said, normally not with this much gold and usually not in a position where they need more damage. Yeah, otherwise Wiggly going to have to do a lot of work from the jungle position, although 
off to a decent start right now as he does look to invade and get some vision down by the looks of things. He's going to see the red buff empty and spot that Krog, so maybe just going to move up there and try and take it. Does go actually over for another dive. Let's see if this one goes any better. Fallen Bandit level 6, pops the ult early. Shiro did hit 6 off the wave though with the ult! Oh no, there's going to move Wiggly back in, but the turret shot's probably not enough. Ben Skarin is trying to answer, but he's got no flash. Can't really chase down, so that's the Tech Minions instead. Oh, that was so close to being well played by Shiro yet again. Uh, went forward, got six off the wave, and tried to land the ultimate on the Fallen Bandit, but comes up just short, which allows Wiggly to re-grab the turret aggro and get the kill. And then Wiggly drops the turret aggro and instantly turns back around. Ten Scarin was body slamming in the direction to cut off potential escape through the turret. As a result, did not have the mobility left to find the kill. Very dangerous dive for a level four Wiggly. Uh, so here, walks forward. Gets the Q onto the cannon minion to get level 6. Very smart by Shiro, but just whiffs the ultimate. Not quite able to outplay. And then here, the instant turnaround as Svenskeren had E down there. Probably wouldn't have been able to get in range anyways, uh, regardless of where he body slammed as he was a second or two late to pre preventing that dive. Well, looks like Sven trying to mid again. He has the ulti there. He's going to get the last breath. Interrupt Tuesday. Already getting low. Draws dropped the ulti, but he's dead very quickly to Golden Glue. Uh, through the heal and everything as the Ignite was back up. All too easy when the Gragas and Yasuo combo gets ahead. It feels so easy to keep finding kills on immobile mages in the mid lane. Tuesday get dropped as his flash was still on cooldown. Yeah, it will be back up in uh, relatively short order, but not lucky enough for that particular timing. Nice combination there from Cloud9 to keep Golden Will his second kill of the game. This has also got a decent CS lead, getting some turret damage here as well as Wiggly in to try and pick up the stray last hits where he can. His auto is going to pull Fang over the wall. It's a bit of damage down, but Braun's pretty tanky and Keith again threatening with the ball. Very curious to see what a level 6 all-in looks like here as well, because we're getting pretty close to those levels also. And we finally get a little bit of info about auto's build. He went first item Tiamat here in the lane. All right, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm not super aware of any Tiamat combos with the pike. He doesn't really have many uh, cooldowns to try and anima animation cancel with his Q. It's pretty long cooldown, E much the same way. Uh, I do know after watching Afro's stream and watching him try about a billion times, there is a way to animation cancel the Q with the E if you time it like perfectly, but it's such a uh, unforgiving and imprecise window that you usually don't want to bank on it happening. So maybe the TM map plays into that somehow, I'm not 100% sure. Otherwise, I just assume it's more damage and that's really what the pike needs. Yep. Looking forward to that. Double aftershock bot side as well. So, again, just a fascinating 2v2. Shame the top side of the map's been so active, Mark Z. Yeah, I mean, that's where both teams are kind of targeting one around mid, one around bot. Golden Glue getting baited. 1v2 does flash away. Windwall and the tornado just to keep Wiggly off his back. But again, perhaps something building here. Level 6 for Keith. But auto also there. Phil no ult just yet. Maybe a decent target, but he's pretty close. Needs maybe two more creeps. Maybe one will do the job as well. But Sven might be trying a long wraparound dive here. Uh, unless they get onto auto, this feels a little dangerous. I assume Phil will hit six off the wave. There it is. Does do so. Fang stepping forward. Pops a glacial vision. They find auto, but Sven needs to guess where he goes. Does undertow out of the way. But now Phil going to get dove under the turret. His ult already ticking away. Just need to buy a little bit more time. Fang may have gone a bit too early. Does get stunned. Pops the watch though, and Keith is able to get the kill. Fang is going to get grabbed Ooh. back by Auto, but he pops up the unbreakable as the rest of the team runs away. Wiggly and Fallen Bandit, though, able to take the first turret. They did force Shira out of that lane. Pretty well played by Otto to stay alive. Phil maybe used his uh, ultimate a little early and took a lot of damage as a result, but he was in a tough spot. Wiggly trying to find it. Sorry, Wiggly trying to get not get killed by Shira, who did dive back around. Turret dead in bot side, though. Cloudland Academy do finally trade objectives. But Wiggly with the ulti, not a great target there for Shira to try and pick off. And Otto, he's sticking around. He's getting some vision there, camouflage, but he's going to take this wave now. Feels like we're slowing down a little bit, or maybe not. Shiro's trying to go aggressive. Yep. Good slam into the wall there on a fallen bandit. Doesn't quite pick up his shield though. Does get the ulti, tries to interrupt the lightning rush. Yeah, really well timed to wait that out. Does force the ultimate, but Wiggly is here on defense. Yep, on the rift tower, but now actually Shiro diving for the kill. He wanted to be a hero, instead, he's just gonna die. Instead, he's just a zero. Or a two and three and zero, I guess. A little aggressive there. By Shira on the play. Rift Tower looking to go over to CLG as well. Golden Glue might be here in time to interrupt it, but looks like the Herald is going to be Oh, close. reset! 
That's embarrassing. Wiggly pushed, pulled it a little too far out. And so they actually will stop the objective. Golden Goose still again, 2-0. Lots of daggers on that zeal already finished, being pretty quick towards his first major item. Got a lot of threat here in the mid lane. All things considered, that interrupt on the Rift Herald might have actually worked out for them because there's no way Wiggly would have been healthy enough to walk forward and pick that up. He was almost dead already to the Rift Herald. Uh, and if he finished it, maybe C9 can kind of stand on it until it times out. Now the objective is still available for CLG if they can feel like they do it at a later date. In the meantime, both teams have flipped their bot lanes to the top side. Top laner is in the bot lane. And we continue to have this very split map with Keith having about a 50, 40 CS lead over CLG Academy's bot lane, whereas on the top side, about a 30 CS lead for Fall and Bandit, as both teams have pretty clear winning matchups. Yep, we'll see if they can kind of play to the correct pressure points and also continue to unlock mid jungle for both these sides. Wiggly's been pretty active, but Golden Glue has certainly been gifted a lot more early advantages. Oh my goodness, that was instant. Flash body slam, last breath, and Golden Glue gets another one. Good roam to the long lane to pick off the cannon who is a little bit far forward. Does cost them some resources and some mid priority, but it looks like they're collapsing fast enough to stop any serious push from coming in. CLG might be getting cut off. Being for assistance, but it's going to be a 2v4 and pretty short order. Shockwave is nice from Keith. Wiggly already forced to burn the ulti, but he's a little too low on health. Does get healed up after the respite ends. Forced to flash the Winter's Bite as well, but Sven coming back around. Can't land it, and CLG actually do not give away a kill there. Yeah, it looks very scary for a second there, uh, but they were able to use the Lambs for Spite to keep themselves alive. Keith stopwatched a little early. Could have waited until the Lambs for Spite ended before potentially needing to use that to stay alive. Uh, either way, well played by CLG to get out of a pretty precarious situation. Still cost them some summoners, though. It's not going to cost them too much more, though, by the looks of things. No Drake attempt. Sven instead is going to counter jungle the red buff. Take that one off the map, or at least off of CLG's half of the jungle. Back to the scene of the last crime, though. Rift Herald being started once again, but this time not much chance of interrupt. There is vision here, though, for Cloud9 Academy, so going to try and get there. They're sure with the TP on top of that ward. Nice placement on that one to stop that from being taken down and Harold's probably going to reset again unless they try and finish it off now. They are going to look to get it. Sven with a smite does grab it away. CLG just leashing for C9 as they get the Rift Herald this time and not really in a position to counter the fact that C9 was collapsing on that. Fallen Bandit just getting down to that bot wave to start pushing it which is going to give Shiro plenty of time to race back across the map and defend the bot lane turret. Who's going to get the blue buff there as Wiggly finally takes a recall after being on pretty low health for his last few minutes. Fallen Bandit with his winning matchup though, continuing to apply pressure. Seeing we're all down here on the bottom side before, we've seen Sven and Golden Glue start to move out of their lane in Golden Glue's case and move around the map. See if he can continue to kind of affect the rest of these lanes because with two different winning points on either side for these teams, I feel like this is where the scales get tipped if Golden Glue can continue to find picks with his ulti in combination with any one of his teammates. Right, and it's it's a weird team comp to fight because C9 Academy is really four melees and an Orianna, which is great for Kennen because that means there's going to be a lot of clumped up fights. Uh, on the flip side, CLG actually have a fair amount of range despite the kind of double melee bot lane. They have a marksman jungler, they have a traditional mage in the mid lane, and then, like we said, this AP Kennen up on the top side. So. Uh, C9 have to be a little bit careful when they engage. If they five man to blow one of the people up and Wiggly gets his ult off and then Fallen Bandit gets his ult off, the fights can be very, very dangerous. Also see that Wiggly, as he was clearing those camps, only has two bounties right now. So definitely wants to be moving towards Fort quickly if he can. Wiggly though onto the Drake with the rest of his team. Sure, he's gonna spot this out. Looks like C9 might just be trying to trade for a turret instead. They did leave Keith up in the top side to push down, so I don't think they realistically want to take this fight. Uh, but I'm not sure the Orianna's going to push fast enough to actually trade these two objectives out. Pike and Alistar are already making their way back to the top side. Turret's only at about half HP, so Keith is going to have to back off this in a second as the collapse continues. Just auto right now, though. Actually, yeah, Phil stayed in the mid lane, so maybe it's Otto who has to be careful. Total, so someone in the mid lane, Cloud9 trying to get the rest of his health Turret, health of the turret taken care of. Shelly charges in. And that's going to be enough. Yeah, uh, good, good macro by C9, kind of punishing CLG, who got a little low from the Drake. They take their recalls, which abandons mid lane. They can't send everyone up to the top side then, and they're getting pulled apart, which ultimately costs them their mid lane turret. And still, this pressure is up in the 2v1 auto. His turret's pretty low, and no help's coming fast enough, perhaps, to try and save it. 
And also, if he gets comboed, he's going to die pretty quickly. Looks like a lot of people are moving in towards that side of the map. Sven and Golden Glue chasing Phil and Wiggly, but Tuesday also roaming up from mid lane as Sven is going to be kind of corralled away into the Baron pit here. Bit of a race for positioning as C9 get the inside track through the river, but CLG guard their entrances and make it a little dangerous to try and wrap around behind the turret. Feels like this dive is still going to happen, though. Yep, they are going to force it here again. Moving CLG away, make sure they get off the turret, if nothing else, and feeling confident enough in their numbers and their positioning, they do give Keith space to finish off the turret. Big part of all this, too, is the fact that Shiro has done a good enough job surviving down the bot side that he's not underneath his turret, pressured 24-7. He is still able to kind of move around the map, push out his wave. If that was a 0-3 and 1 Poppy who got shut down with all those dives and didn't get that one double kill, you know, you're not sitting on that Spectre's Cowl quite yet, maybe, or you don't have your Merc Treads completed, the Bomby Cinder, but since he did get those two kills, he's doing a lot better job kind of isolated in the side lane than he might have been otherwise. I think relative to the other losing matchup there on the CLG side, Auto is down significantly to Keith's oh, yeah. in CS, so you can kind of see all those differences play out, and once again, with that winning mid lane, although Tuesday is keeping up in CS and has finished his perfect hex call. Certainly not too much between these two teams, 2,500 gold or so ahead for Cloud9 Academy, but a long way to go before this game is really out of anyone's distance. Absolutely the case, and like we said, the team comps interact a little interestingly. Have to be careful about C9 for over-engaging. It's obviously just as true for CLG. Anytime an Orianna's on the team with a Gragas, you can easily set up a Wombo and the Yasuo goes flying in. So both teams are going to have to show a pretty good patience whenever they look for a pickoff. Looks like Keith and Feng are now guarding the mid lane. This is a traditional role of Orianna. Usually doesn't have a friend to do it though. But Keith will be happy to just keep these waves pushing around and we'll see if Golden Glute does actually want to get to a side lane at all. It's not bad in a 1v1 given that he's a 3 0 Yasuo pretty early into this game. And I wonder how much of Keith on the Orianna was a planned pick or a reaction to the fact that the enemy team picked a Pike Alistar bot lane, which, which screams kill lane, of course, especially at six with the execute. So you take Braum, who's obviously very defensive, and then with an Orianna who can sit behind him and just shield him, it suddenly becomes very difficult to land an all in. So I'm wondering, you know, was this an adaptation, which is only possible because of the meta, or if it was a pre-planned thing. E either way, I'm super excited to see the strategy of putting the Orianna down the bot side uh, at all, especially if it was in reaction. Depending on the winner, we may well find that out, Moxie, but we'll have to wait to see at a later date. I have a slight bias that now is, for C9 to win, <laughs> so I can interview them and ask, there is, was the Orianna planned? There is no foreshadowing for a potential interview that may or may not be coming up. But definitely if we talk to them, we'll ask them about it. As Tuesday does get the blue buff. Like we said, CLG Academy is still well and truly in this game. And the uh, game has definitely slowed down a bit after some of the early action around the top half of the map. Teams, I think, at this point, trying to consolidate their macro for C9 to keep their map lead, make sure they have the lanes pushing out. For CLG Academy, it's counter push effectively and try to find windows into taking the other objectives to even up the gold. I think it was a situation where both teams had clear points that they wanted to attack early on in the game. C9 wanted to go mid, CLG wanted to go top, but CLG was not able to convert cleanly enough top on their kills for Fallen Bandit to have pressure to keep forcing around that side of the map then. And as a result, C9's naturally winning bot lane has kind of warped how the game has played out since then as it's mostly revolved around this Orianna pick now. Uh, and, and CLG are having a much harder time finding windows to attack that poppy uh, as a result. See these two though still continuing to move around the map together as Keith and Fang get things going in mid lane. Double BF Sword signals Infinity Edge second for Golden Glue. So not going to make a stop off at any of the many and varied Yasuo items we have seen from time to time. But CLG got the early push here. Five man strong in the mid lane. He's going to take that one out. Good timing here as C9 were pushing both side lanes. CLG are going to have to back off and answer those. As you see Shiro and Golden Glue on the minimap starting to vacate their lanes as those minion waves crash into the turrets. Just got to grab money here for Golden Glue. Just going to get some Baron Vision now that that has spawned as well. Ooh, Wiggly's got to be careful. Does not want to show on that minion wave because that might signal for C9 that they can start the Baron up. Doesn't look like they caught him there, though. Yeah, Mountain Drake up in 20 seconds as well. CLG got the first one, so see if teams do want to look for that one. It was a pretty late take on that first Drake. 
looks like C9's favoring vision around the top half of the map right now, but Shiro could be caught out. Yep. Doesn't have to burn the flash though, so holds on to that, which is nice. They are going to lose vision around this Drake. It looks like CLG are more than interested in trying to take these down. Let's see what C9 chooses to do. Looks like they're looking for the collapse this time and don't want to lose another elemental Drake. And Shiro's in a pretty good spot to threaten Wiggly here. Yep, Shiro just going to force him out of the way again, thanks to the leash. Thought they're going to waltz in and take this one away. It does feel like, you know, with that 3,000 gold lead, C9 are much stronger in the game as well as having a better front line. So when you get into these kind of neutral objective standoffs, it's very hard to do something about a Poppy running straight at you. Whereas on the flip side, CLG really only have the Alistar who can perform that role. As you can see, kind of C9 collapse back around their own jungle. I've been staring at that Gromp bounty for a while. I'm pretty sure Wiggly is still sitting on only two of those stacks. Yes, he is. So yeah. It's, I mean, the first few like, kind of felt like, you know, we got the good Crab RNG on the left, got that kill good, or assist, able to get that next one. But since then, it's been a, a starvation game on the Kindred bounties here. Yeah, definitely a disappointing continuation from a great start for him. And it all kind of reflects from the fact that CLG started falling behind in pressure once their carry top plan uh, was not as successful as they wanted it to be. Baron priority continuing to be in the forefront of C9's mind though. Double control wards around the pit. Fang misses that ward. Oof. Didn't have a sweeper up anyway. So a cutely cute placement there for CLG to give themselves good vision into their entrance. And with that adaptive helm completed by Shiro, he's going to be a nightmare to try and kill on CLG Academy's side. A lot of cannon damage will be reduced. A lot of uh, kindred and uh, victor damage will be reduced. The Chaos Storm is going to be ticking for very little against that Yordle. Poppy already a pretty good tank, so Shiro kind of equalized all those things despite a slight CS deficit. Cloud9 also trying a pretty hefty flank here on the left side. Bottom going on top of a ward though is not a good spot. Fang also going to tank up some damage here, but hops away to a minion. Gravity field not enough to lock him down. Fallen Bandit even wanted to pinch himself. Auto getting aggressive. C9 TPing in. Shiro going to really try and force here. Does cancel though. Yeah, CLG Academy did a good job of getting a good flank position and threatening C9 into needing to teleport defensively to protect themselves. They almost caught Fang out, who was slightly too far forward. They didn't find the angle onto him, but they might have had it onto Golden Glue, so that's why that TP came in. Uh, but they still are down pressure on CLG's side, so while they did get the TP advantage for a brief moment here, they are going to have a hard time still finding a window to use theirs. Yep. Shiro continuing to apply pressure as well in his lane. Actually, a spotted Wiggly here on this red buff. Might just try and steal it. Doesn't grab it. Would have been close as Wiggly did smite a touch early, but C9 instead will invade four on the left hand side and steal away this blue buff. Does go over to Sven Skarin. A bit risky there as it looked like Fang almost was going to steal that blue buff away. Not the case. C9 just continuing to pressure up to. Three and a half thousand gold lead, four, four and a half, something like that. I mean, they're building some gold off of what they're getting on the map and somewhat denying CLG, but really with just this turret lead staying where it is, Cena aren't really making ground yet. They haven't, they didn't, they got a Drake, but they haven't got really much around the Baron. They haven't got a second turret just yet. So for all the pressure and the gold that they are building up, this gold still very close between the two sides. Definitely the case. And it feels like this is one of those games where C9 kind of knows that they outscale with their vastly superior front line and they're just waiting until they have enough of a gold lead or just enough gold in general to take Baron down pretty risk free. Yeah, I think with Golden Glue finishing his IE, Ash has a second BF Sword as well, I guess third, sorry. BF Sword as well building into what I can only assume is Guardian Angel. I think Auto's side lane days are shortened by the presence of <laughs> He hasn't Yasuo. been in that lane against Yasuo for a long time, as Shiro getting jumped on now. But again, still so tanky. Flashes out of the way, is forced to burn the summoner, so not bad there for CLG. Pretty persistent here. Looks like they'll get the turret out of the deal as well. Yep, Shiro wanted to flash before he started getting any lower, as there are still two flashes available on CLG's side. However, there's that trade and pressure, and this time Svenskeren makes the way up to Golden Glue. They're going to trade these turrets out, but it is the inner that C9 is grabbing. Wiggly finally gets that bounty off the Gromp, but does uh, cost them a turret trade there as C9 finally take a tier 2 away from CLG. CLG there with the outer ring felt are keeping up in objectives. 
They're still behind 4,000 gold, and ooh, Vision dropped around the Baron. Yeah, I think they know they did just sneak into a pocket of Vision here. They need to check pretty quickly. The Mountain Drake plus just how much damage Yasuo does naturally is making it so CLG probably a little too lax of daysical here. Maybe the other thing was Svenskaren hopped the wall and they didn't see that. Either way, the blue vision trinket comes down. They see that they were starting it off. Now CLG are kind of using it as a leash. I'm not sure they actually want to start this. Yeah, actually reset almost all the way up to full, but they are going to start it and force Cloud9 into the Baron area. Cloud9 uh, gladly accept and CLG gladly retreat. Phil not having really any HP. Got chunked out very heavily by that Baron buff. And now they have to vacate the area. C9 all grouped up as five. Wouldn't be surprised to see them dip back to the Baron. Instead trying to actually use this pressure to siege the mid inner turret. Yeah, Tuesday has to get maybe a little too close to the Gragas on the Braum, but Fallen Bandit threatening the flank on the side does call off that siege from Cloud9. There is an Infernal Drake spawning in 30 seconds as well. We've split the first two on that objective, so Pretty good one to get at the juncture we own the game, but you don't want it to cost your Baron presence either. Uh oh, Phil with a good double pull. Fallen and Bandit gonna try and complete the combo with the Ma Maelstrom, but Shiro taking up a lot of damage. Wiggly forced to burn the ult pretty quickly. Fallen Bandit also taking a big chunk. As Keith has done a nice job there. Golden Glue trying to launch onto the carries. Flashes straight onto Tuesday. Does get the last breath. He's gonna try and take down Phil, who's got no ulti left either, but. No one dead on either side, despite a lot of cooldowns being used. Yeah, but the big thing is, C9 Academy are really not too chunked out. Shiro, who uh, bore the brunt of that attack, is still only at half HP, so they're going to turn right on the Baron buff now and just do it in Vision of CLG, who are super low. And they're going to challenge them to contest. Fallen Bandit does have Flash available, but no ult. Yeah, he TP'd back, but he's got no cooldown. Cannon, a pretty ult-reliant champion. Wiggly also not going to be in the area to try and steal this away, so this will take Something pretty miraculous. Auto gonna dive in. Fallen Bandit trying to run interference. Gragas able to get the Baron. That's when Scarin securing it for Cloud9. Good play by Cloud9. And even though CLG got the jump at the start of that fight, you just saw how tanky and difficult it was for CLG to win it. And once C9 kind of regrouped and attacked back for CLG into full retreat mode, it's gonna do their best to trade out for an Infernal Drake, though. We're really gonna run down here. Should be a pretty clean pickup. Has enough damage basically on his own to take it. Tuesday helping where he can over the wall. So they are going to see it, but they're not going to get it almost there in time. But CLG do collect that second Drake for themselves. Time to see what else they can get, though. As they have the Baron buff for another three minutes. And they are going to definitely want to take this turret. Auto, a bit dangerous. Yep. Golden Glute is going to spot him there through the camouflage. Gets the damage down. Last breath. No shield. Oh. Goodbye. Through the exhaust, he dies as Phil dived in a little too far forward. Does get two on the Pulverize, but Tino will happen to take the turret instead. Wiggly trying to get knocked back, does flash through the Gragas cast to get damage boosted back to safety. The C9 full on attack right now. And that's without their biggest frontliner in Shiro. He's pushing the mid wave. It's going to be a 4 1 split here. And with Auto dead, the bot lane carry Pike. Do they have enough to hold off a dive? Inhibitor turret does fall there in the bot lane. But inhibitors still need to be taken down here. For Cloud9, they look to get one. Should be able to grab it. Shiro also working on the midsection of the map as well. He just needs to weave in one more auto. Golden Blue is taking to do the last bit of damage. Oh, Last Breath actually finds Phil. He's going to get the kill. They take down the inhib as well. Mid also exposed, so Cloud9 looking to take two in pretty short order. Don't quite have the turret just yet, but uh, are able to take it pretty swiftly after that play. With a minute 40 left on Baron, so a lot of work that they can do here. Yeah, Goldie ballooned all the way up to 11k on the tail end of all these plays for themselves. So not only are they going to be up massive map pressure with the double inhibitor take, they're also going to have a ton of gold to spend as soon as they're able to find a time to get back into base. Going to walk topside instead though, Cloud9. Again, just kind of leaning on the inevitability they feel in this game. Happy with their scaling, happy with their position. So just going to stay ahead in this game. No need to and riskily close it out given the advantage they've built. Maybe at the same time, Golden Glue and Keith are continuing to push. Poppy's the only one who recalled, and she has TP to get back into this fight. Shiro's probably going to go on the minion once they get this wave in the turret. Does go, and indeed, going to make it tank the maximum amount of hits here. Auto does find a hook on a Sven Scaring, but Wiggly going to get assaulted. Also pressuring forward, Shiro tanking what he can. Here's the Maelstrom in from Fallen Bandit. Gets moved back in the last breath. He's going to shut it down. Able to get that kill now. Phil on the front side is going to die as Golden Glue picks up the double. Everyone leaping forward through is Wiggly going to be the next target. Shockwave finds him in the Lambda Spike, but it's probably not enough to protect him. Spent able to take him down as Cloud9 
get three kills there. Yeah, really cute play by Shiro to push the Kindred out of her own ultimate, allowing her to die before that finish. Uh, channeling and now as a result C9 five man strong looking to end the game. Yeah, it should be pretty straightforward finish here for Cloud9. Left Nexus turret gonna fall still so many dead for a number of seconds. Another last breath for Golden Glue as Keith is on a killing spree taking down Auto. The unconventional bot lane was fun to look at but the Nexus is gonna be exposed for Cloud9 Academy. The minions stream in and they will they will strike back with a bit of revenge after Cloud CLG took them out the last time they played. They'll stay with only one loss in Academy as they take him down. Yeah, their only loss being to CLG. They finally get their chance for payback. Uh, Wiggly, unfortunately, does not complete the season revenge against C9 Academy. And uh, once again, C9 looking like the best team by far in the Academy League. Yeah, continuing to look extremely strong here. I mean, I'm trying to think of a point where they really faltered. Apart from that top side that was going wrong early on, and sure, it even did a good job nullifying that. That was about all of the problems they had there. Yeah, and I definitely want to raise an eyebrow at the draft by CLG. I said I'd give it, you know, let's see what happens. Maybe there's something. Now that you've quite. seen what happened. Now that I've seen it, I'm really <laughs> baffled at what it, uh, I mean, like, I understand it's supposed to be an all-in lane, but, like, should you not snowball out of control with the pressure from your top side and bot side and Wiggly's supposed to run in between the two, I mean, like, the game's going to completely fall apart. And as soon as the top dive started working out and the Orianna flex potentially down to the bot side, which hopefully we'll hear about, uh, it just all came apart for CLG. Oh, funny you should mention that, because later on we will be hearing from Cloud9 Academy yes. jungler Sven Skarin on that win. Well, let's take a look at some of the work he did with his mid laner, Golden Glue. We didn't talk too much about the Yasuo because of how cool the bot lane was and how much happened in the top side, but he did a lot of work. Yeah, that's the big thing, is all the things that were going wrong for CLG up in the top side, there was also things going great for C9 in the mid lane. Tuesday, trying to just flash away from some damage, but not putting himself any closer to safety, and then with that flash down, the repeat gank post six, all too easy for them to find those kills with the Ignite also being up again. Golden Glue was off to the races and that made it really difficult to continue trying to play around that top side. Now Golden Glue is influencing the side lanes as well. And you could tell that both teams were really good because after the game slipped away from CLG, they were still able to contest a lot of objectives. And it wasn't like C9 blew the game wide open and it was over at 24 minutes. So you can tell CLG was a good team in a macro sense. The draft, uh, whether or not it was execution or the actual draft letting them down. Once they fell behind, they couldn't do anything to get back, but they still put up a good fight. And it definitely built up to this moment that we'll see in just a second. The final fight in the top lane with CLG just could not defend. Everything started crumbling from that point on. Yeah, and this is, this is a, you know, after everything's already gone wrong, Fallen Bandit trying to brute force his way in here, not able to do it, not having any opportunity to pop a Zonias or anything, just gets 100 to 0 Normally the Gragas is not trying to ult a cannon back into his team, but in this situation, absolutely fine. And here you see some of the interactions they have against uh, Wiggly. Really nice ultimate to negate the Orianna, but all too easy for the Poppy to then reposition and get the knockback. And you see between 15 and 25 minutes, the gold lead really didn't grow. And I think that's when you kind of have to say, like, you can tell CLG is a good team with a losing draft at that point in the game. They did not lose after that point. But once C9, also a really good team, was able to grab that Baron, the game is over. So I just did some quick maths, and I'm terrible at it. So uh, we'll have to check the tapes uh, in a later moment. But I'm pretty sure that Braum did more damage than the CLG bot lane combined. If I, if I added that up quickly and correctly, it was 4K combined to 4.1K. For the Brom. I don't want to see Do you more about that victory? I'd like to welcome Sven Skarin to the broadcast via Skype. Sven Skarin, how are you doing, my friend? Hey, I'm doing all right, I guess. All right. I have to ask you a little bit about the draft because the enemy team put the Pike and the Alistar in the bot lane, and then you guys responded with the Orianna. Uh, I was just curious if that was a reaction to seeing a potential kill lane or if that was kind of the plan with Golden Glue always going to be on the Yasuo. Uh, I mean, I think we just feel like Orianna is such a power pick right now where you can flex it and the enemy team won't really know where it's going. So we just end up having like good matchups in mid and bot because they they try to counter pick like uh, mid the Orianna red and we get a counter pick and it's just pretty good, yeah. I mean, there's definitely kind of a lot of fun stuff going on. Were you expecting Pike to go where he would either? Because I don't know how many people have played against Pike farming bot lane before. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't. Ex uh, I don't think anybody expected the Pike to be the AD. <laughs> yeah, it didn't, didn't look too great. Uh, but talking about your performance, uh, you did a really good job working around Golden Glue in the mid lane and uh, kind of snowballing him. So how did you feel about your performance in this game and also given the fact that you have played with Golden Glue prior to playing an academy with him? Uh, yeah, so I think me and Golden Glue works pretty well together where I think 
he makes a lot of good calls early game around his lane and like when his lane is gankable. So I just like play around that and he just has pretty good mid game shot calling too. And I think we work pretty well together. So I think the academy games feels a bit easy because we also have a lot of experience and like in scrims against LCS teams and we also played on the LCS stage together a little bit. So it's not too hard to play these games. Does your role on this team feel that different given that you are a veteran that's come down to play in academy? Like you have a lot of experience, but primarily in academy for a lot of your teammates. Uh, are you taking a more active role as a veteran? Are you doing more shot calling kind of on this team? Uh, so I think my role on the team is I just veto some of the bad calls maybe. <laughs> I don't think I do as much shot calling as like Golden Glue, for example, in this team. I think Keith and Golden Glue really carry this academy team where I don't think really anybody has to do it much because they just do a lot of the calling and a lot of the mid lane and bot lanes in academy don't seem too strong. So we usually just get a big lead in those two lanes. Cool. And then, of course, uh, 12 and 1 now or 13 and 1 after this. Uh, you guys are obviously dominating the Academy League and the LCS team is trying to find some more wins. And people have always said that, you know, you have the strongest 10-man roster most likely. Is that how you guys feel as well? And especially with Fang slotting in there, uh, how has he been doing? Uh, I don't know about the strongest 10-man roster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Fang, for example, is super good. His mechanics is super good and... He just calls a lot of like aggressive stuff, so you get confidence in his uh, ability, like we can fight stuff. Where I feel like a lot of times we might not be as confident, but he makes a pretty aggressive call, like to trust him. So we just go for like a good fight. Well, so I think he's pretty good. Well, it's certainly been an impressive showing so far. So I'm thank you so much for joining us, and congratulations on your win today. Thank you. Well, two games down, but we're just getting started. Coming up next, we'll see 100 Thieves Academy taken on the Golden Guardians. Don't go too far. Their first presence up. Fallen Band are already doing a little too much damage. The tower, though, it's actually going to be good. Shiro finds the trade under the turret. Whoa. Wiggly. Trying to mid again. He has the ulti there. He's going to get the last breath. Interrupt Tuesday. Already getting low. Draws dropped the ulti, but he's dead. Golden Blue has certainly been gifted a lot more early advantages. Oh my goodness, that was instant. Golden Blue is going to spot him there through the camouflage. Gets the damage down. Last breath. No shield. Oh. Goodbye. Just needs to weave in one more auto. Golden Blue is still going to do the last bit of damage. Oh, last breath actually finds Phil. Also pressuring forward. Shiro tanking what he can. Here's the Maelstrom in from Fallen Bandit. Gets moved back in. The last breath hit's going to shut it down. Able to get that kill now. Phil on the front side is going to die as Golden Blue picks up the double. 